Cool, it's recorded. So, um, this is Pat. Uh, Pat Hsu is Associate Director of Design at uh, Rhizome on the Web Recorder team. And she's going to walk us through what Rhizome does, what Re Web Recorder does, and how their work ties into this week's lecture. So, I'll give it up to you, Pat. Hello, peers class. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so you already, you know, you feel like you did a pretty good introduction. Um, yeah, I'm Associate Director of Design on the Web Recorder Project. I work for Rhizome, which is um, uh, an institution, um, ooh, an institution that champions um, born digital art and culture. Uh, we do commissions, um, exhibitions, and we also have a digital preservation uh, program, and we also develop software that enables us to do our um, curatorial and preservation work. And we're based in New York, in the um, out of the new museum on the Bowery. And um, hello, this is Potato. Hi, Potato. Uh, <laughs> and um, I figured it's a little bit, it sometimes is a little bit hard to sort of describe um, to people what Rhizome does. Um, we are mainly known for our work in net art, um, in sort of promoting, preserving um, net art, net art uh, um, sort of history. Um, but I figured maybe a good way to sort of give a, a practical sort of picture of what actually happens at Rhizome is to sort of to do a sort of quick um, like I guess overview of our team. So as you can see we're a pretty small outfit um, and sort of mainly the work falls into two sort of categories. We've got the curatorial and editorial side that does um, sort of the exhibitions, um, commissioning, commissioning um, say editorial pieces and commissioning artwork. And then there's the preservation and software side, which does um, part of the sort of preservation work of, um, of, of um, conserving these, um, these digital art pieces and making sure that they remain accessible. Um, and also creating the software that enables us to do that work. So I primarily am, am on the side of um, developing the software that we use um, mainly in-house, but also um, some public facing tools. So what I'm gonna do over the next few slides is sort of just give little examples from each sort of little area, I guess, of Rhizome's activities. Um, and I think Pierre will be sharing these slides. So everything's linked and you can go sort of click through and, and check them out if you want. Uh, so this is an example of an exhibition that we recently co-commissioned. Um, and uh, this is done in partnership with the Cronus Arts Center. I'm just gonna click through. So, so this is, this is the exhibition. And here you can mouse over, you see the different pieces. So I think bringing that back to augmenting the gallery, right? Like this is, um, you know, I think like what, what, does, what does the gallery look like when you are presenting pieces that are inherently um, meant to be experienced online? So, okay, the link is there. You can click through and check it out if you want. Where's the, where's the Cronus Art Center? Boom. Sweet. I mean, for like physically, it's in China. In, yeah, it's in China. But I'm trying to find out where. Okay, let's not. Let's <laughs> let's stay on track. The Cronus Art Center is in China. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So this is this is another. Um, another exhibition, but one on a very different scale. Um, so this, this, this one consists of both. Um, so first, okay, it spent two years. And over these two years, um, over 100, 100 art pieces were presented um, and they were released as a weekly. And so if you go to the Net Art Anthology site, you can kind of see this online exhibition that's also a sort of survey of um, notable works in net art to date. 
But accompanying this online exhibition, we also have the um, we also have the gallery exhibition. So this this was the gallery exhibition at the new museum itself uh, in September, sometime in winter of last year. Um, and since this is quite like a sort of substantial exhibition, um, there's also a publication along with it, sort of sort of give more information on um, both the art pieces themselves and the preservation um, processes behind it. When you, when you when you guys decided to do that exhibition, was it always in the back of your minds that it was going to be a physical um, exhibition in the end, or did you start with a digital one and then you realized you could do a physical version? I think that it was always part of the plan to have a gallery exhibition as one of the components. But that said, it's not like it isn't the gallery exhibition isn't like a presentation of like, say, the hundred works or, you know, of the hundred works presented on. It's not like sort of a mirror of the online exhibition. It's like selected pieces that really have a physical uh, element to them that um, that's important and central to the piece. So like, um, yeah, like Mauritians, I mean, I guess it's sort of hard to to mm -hmm. see, but I mean, all the, there's more information on the Net Art Anthology site. And say for okay, so Alexi Shulgin's piece that's a really good example. Um, this piece is a computer that um, has like a let's see if we can get a video going. Mm -hmm. So this is. <laughs> Okay, I'll let your students like explore that on their own if they're interested, but sort of this this performance of the busking singing computer is the piece. So um, that's definitely one that, you know, was yeah, like, it wasn't just it, yeah. yeah, so that was presented in the gallery show and um, it was also um, in conjunction with the gallery show also set up in um, you know, we set it up in a subway station. Uh, so I think it bust for like, I think a morning. Uh, <laughs> How much did it make? I have no idea. Hmm. Did it make <laughs> can you, can you measure? I think, how about like an Instagram clout, you know, like if you... <laughs> I mean, <I'm> <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so it's just, um, I think there's, there's just, such like a variance in the kind of um, kind of art pieces that you're dealing with when you talk about like net art. Um, mm -hmm. That yeah, there's there's I think just very different treatment and mm -hmm. and presentation, and you kind of have to be very thoughtful about that. So um, yeah, I think the gallery exhibition was definitely like sort of conceived from the very beginning with the intent of presenting some of these pieces that have, you know, like physical, like a physicality that's like central to the piece itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so moving from the sort of exhibition and um, exhibition and commission side, we're moving more sort of to behind the scenes, right? So the stuff that makes presenting a gallery show like this possible, right? Um, or, I mean, or presenting like, say, these um, online works possible. So for example, like some of the pieces um, might run on like, so let, like say a piece of net art, yeah. A piece of net art that's like from, like say the early, like early 2000s, like how would you present that, right? Or like, okay, here. So, you know, if, even if you were to have like the actual, let's just say like that you have the actual like HTML pages, like direct from like blogger, um, is it as simple as just like hosting that on a, on a page? Like if you visit that with a sort of modern browser, it's gonna render very differently. So to sort of address like to, you know, to make it possible for us to present some of these pieces, you kind of need to means create the solution from scratch because there isn't something just like out there sitting on a shelf in the market that you can, you know, that you can purchase or pay a monthly subscription and use. So just as an example of one of the things that we do, um, 
this is this is webrecorder.io, the screenshot here, and that's part of the web recorder project. So the web recorder project's mission is to create um, open source web archiving tools that anyone can use. Um, so okay, what is web preservation? Mm -hmm. Like some of you might be familiar with say the Wayback Machine um, or like archive.org, right? So like a web page that isn't online anymore, if it has been archived by uh, archive.org, you can go to the Wayback Machine, look for it and go like, okay, I want to see what this page looked like in like uh, 2015 on a particular day. And it sort of brings up that instance. So the thing with that is that that's very centralized web archiving, right? So like archive.org is mainly sort of in control of um, like of what gets archived, like what, what, gets, what gets captured, how frequently. Um, and also like at the end of the day, the data is with them. So what Web Recorder is trying to do is create the tools that allow you to sort of do the same thing where like you can sort of visit any web page, interact with it and basically have a version that you can then sort of replay, like you can access at any time and sort of have it ideally behave um, like it does when you, you know, when you first captured it. Mm -hmm. Ideally, because that is actually like the it's it's more difficult than you might think. Like given the way web technologies are today, like so just going to let's just say like an Instagram feed, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many sort of moving parts that yeah. just it's not as easy as like right click save page and you're done. Mm -hmm. um, and so what Web Recorder uh, does is that it sort of watches it watches network traffic to try to sort of then reconstruct the page in a way that when you're accessing this web archived version of it mm -hmm. um, that you sort of get like the same or as close as possible kind of interactions with the site so this is important for example like for uh, rhizome like when rhizome uh, needs to say capture um, say a performance piece by an artist that uh, say say Amalia Ullman, right? Like she she's an artist that performed different personas on Instagram um, across various different accounts. So that's something that's like you know, like it isn't just like going there and like right click and saving every image. You kind of need the entire like Instagram interface to really kind of capture the the artwork. So this yeah, so this is this is an example of how like a tool like this is applied. Um, and so Web Recorder has multiple sort of components as well, like webrecorder.io is, is, you know, that you can visit that and create a free account and sort of try that out. And that's the hosted service where you can, um, you know, try to sort of capture whatever pages and, and download and all, all the data is just, you can, you can sort of download and take your data with you at any time. Um, it's totally sort of open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like ISO standard. WARC files. Um, there's also the desktop app and then the, the player app, which really is just like, if you're not interested in so much capturing, you just kind of want to open these .warc files, these web archive files and look through them. That's another tool, but there's there's many other components, right? So like even the, um, say Pi Wayback, like the, the Wayback, like the replay engine, I guess that it, it runs on. Anyway, Mm -hmm. Links are all there. Um, I'm not going to get into the weeds of it, but this is an example of sort of the work that Rhizom does. So even though we're an art organization, we have, I think, a pretty sort of unique component here where we also do um, sort of software development work. Right. You have your own infrastructure that you need instead of outsourcing. Right. right. Um, and it's interesting too, because I think that this sort of started in-house at Rhizome, um, but, you know, the web, this web recorder is like, real life example right now, just really at the beginning of this year, Web Recorder has sort of become its own independent um, project, or I guess you could think of it as, yeah, an, an independent entity, so that it could just sort of focus on this mission more, because no longer is, I think that it's become something that's larger than like, you know, something that's just, oh yeah, like in this little niche, because um, mm -hmm. there's definitely, you know, for journalists, right, for, there's so many other applications of, of I mean, thinking of, of like Twitter feeds, where like people might say something stupid on Twitter or something like that, and then delete the tweet, and then you want to be able to retrieve that and retrieve it in within the particular context. And we're moving yeah, on. yeah, and there are many like, you know, journalists and researchers like that, are mm -hmm. yeah, that use this tool specifically for that purpose mm -hmm. of, 
um, yeah, of, of getting captures of feeds before like things get deleted. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is this is this is like the web recorder project right now. Kind of is has sort of broken off into its own entity, so they can continue developing these tools like beyond the context of like the net art like application of it. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and then this okay. <laughs> back to like the other. You should have moved this like earlier up. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this kind of like concludes like my sort of section on on. Uh, I think the, the part that might be most relevant to your class on um, on like the technology and presentation, yeah, like the work that require, like work, the sort of behind the scenes work required to. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, could you could you just like elaborate a little bit more on the actual player app? So, like, if I capture something that I consider being of like significant cultural heritage through Web Recorder, how do I share that with someone else? So, okay, so the player app, part of, I think one of the core applications that we were thinking of when we developed the player app is like reading rooms, right? So like when, when you sort of draw the like analogy of, of going to an archive and requesting something from the archive and sort of viewing it in like the reading room, mm -hmm. um, like that, that application is sort of what we were, we were thinking of when we develop the player app where you're you don't want all like the clunkiness of like you're not trying to create any web arc like you're not trying to capture any content at that point you are just accessing um files that have already been created and mm -hmm. there are other tools on the market right that that create these web archive files um and, and work files so some like sometimes archivists may just need to sort of go into like open up a work file and just see what's in there mm -hmm. um, so yeah, in, in a way, it's like the, the, the player app is really just like the desktop app, but without the capture capability. It's kind of just like read only. Cool, okay. Yeah, I mean, another app. Hmm? It looks like a web browser basically, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it works like a web browser, but with the magic of like piecing things back together, right? Like, so it's, you know, like what I was saying earlier with like it being not as simple as right click save page as if like if only everything was just like static HTML and like mm -hmm. Like, but you know, there's so like what happens when you are on a Twitter feed and you like click on a specific tweet and like you kind of go into a thread like you might be at the same URL or like, you know, you might, might not look like anything has changed. Like it might just look like something has like sort of toggled open, but you're on a different URL or it could be on, you're on the same URL and if that's just, you know, like dynamically things are getting like, um, yeah. things are made to happen right within the browser. So it's like, that's, I think, yeah, you could look at it as like a magic browser that like, um, just reconstitutes everything as it should be or as it was before. Yes, that tries to, that aims to, that strives to. Um, <laughs> it's about the goal. <laughs> things break. It's just, that's just what happens. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the, you know, the goal is to be able to, and it's, it, it sounds really simple, but it's like way harder than you might imagine, right? Like try going, you know, some people say like, oh yeah, but then, you know, archive.org, you could go there and like, key in a url and they would actually capture that for you well okay like go and do that and show like try to capture your facebook feed or i don't know do kids exactly. use or, or, anymore? like you can have the youtube video that doesn't play back the actual youtube video yeah exactly like try to try to go you know capture youtube or like try to it's it's harder than you might think and the things just like that the web is just like forever shifting right is it's it's kind of like trying to to and that's one of the big challenges of, of digital preservation, I think, is that it, it seems that the web is just magic and that it works and that no one has to actually do anything to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. And that therefore everything is going to be there forever, but it's actually an incredibly complicated infrastructure that becomes more and more complicated every day. I mean, the internet literally is like breaking and like it, it takes constant work to even get like, like mm -hmm. make this call possible, right? It's, you know, there, I mean, it's, yeah, no, there's, you're totally right. There's like so many moving parts um, that mm -hmm. are like dependencies on dependencies on dependencies. So it's, it's yeah. on the web has sort of like the dual, like, yeah, um, potential of being like extremely permanent, but also being extremely, extremely fragile. And like, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, that, that definitely, I, th I think that 
like, and also just like sort of bringing that again to like the theme of the class, like, you know, what, so like so far, you know, they've been using tech to kind of present more like traditional things in traditional mediums that kind of are more like static. Exactly. And set, the, right? the, the data format is already established and like the procedure for archiving a uh, sculpture or a painting is already established. For mm -hmm. And when you think of, so when you think of that, like sort of the object boundary is like literal, like that's the object you're like, that's the painting, that's not the painting, that's the painting, that's the frame. Like it's mm -hmm. literal, but it's like, okay, what happens when, yeah, like take Amalia Ullman's piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, where, where does, you know, is, is the art just like the literal, you know, like let's, let's bring up her piece so that we have mm -hmm. some visuals to show. Um, yeah, I didn't know that she did it around um, multiple accounts. Yeah, it's, um, let's see, so excellences and imperfections. Okay, so these are the various like different accounts. Let's just go to this one. Please work. And so Web and Act is another um, Mm -hmm. That's like a, a rhizome emulation service, basically. <sighs> a lesson in things the web being broken. constantly breaking. Mm -hmm. I looked at it a couple of years ago and it was working. Fortunately, there are other ways to get to. So this is the web recorder interface. Yes. Cool. So, okay, here's entry point one. Okay, so I don't, yeah, I don't, if, if you're on Instagram, you would know that this is a super old school interface. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this was, when did she post these? Like 2014? Yeah, so like there's, you know, like, is it just the pictures or is this entire interface like, mm -hmm. You know, it, it is the, the background of the piece is that she was posing as a, a like wannabe model that moved to LA or something like this. Um, yeah, so I think she's like sort of. I feel like this is so like you could look at this right now and you'd be like, oh yeah, but then everyone on Instagram is like that. But I think that like what she was sort of doing with with this piece was just like you know she was making a piece on this sort of like mm -hmm. culture of self-presentation of weaving these like narratives right mm -hmm. um and there there are some some of those images where she's like crying in the dark or like talking about suicide yeah and it, it gets dark so let's see i think mm -hmm. we have one of them and that's another thing too so okay so here you've got like uh so this this is this is um dragon esmanshid's account and so the director of preservation yeah director of preservation and you can see so like wh where do you even present like the entry point like where do you start when you're looking at a painting you're like there it is you know you might mm -hmm. give tips on like no you got to stand six feet away if you're looking at a monet like mm -hmm. you know but like where do you where do you like how do you like where do you drop someone in for something like an instagram feed right so here you know dragons created like okay we've got different like entry points mm -hmm. um I'm not saying that that's like the ultimate like best way. It's just right. you but know. It's a question that you guys are trying to answer. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know exactly where it is. So she's got multiple personas, right? And then she kind of gets like this like breakdown, like kind of moment where you know it's like she's posting emo stuff and like yeah. So part. I mean, she kind of scripted everything. Where sort of having that whole like very public like you know instant influencer like breakdown was this part of it just yeah. <laughs> and and just to like again highlight that this was done in like 2014 when it wasn't just like oh duh you know like that like obvious, was yeah. instagram ever about anything else but i think she was just sort of like calling on this like calling out this mm -hmm. um the yeah this culture yeah that would eventually just like define all of instagram mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, okay, so like bringing it back to, you know, the, you know, like. Yeah, so the, you know, you is, actually archive those objects and it's hard to like figure out what the object is in the first place. Exactly, like where is the object boundary, right? Like as in, you know, to, to 
like look, you know, and, and, and even if you're looking at this to look at the actual like data, like as in it's, it's difficult. It's just like, oh, okay. It's like, it's just a bunch of like network traffic that's like been captured right. to allow people to, and it's not even working like completely perfectly. Like just being able to click on something, I should be able to see, um, the image pop up. Yeah. Yeah. I should be able to see, I mean, cause like I would argue that like the comments are a really crucial part of this piece, you know, people responding to it like they think it's like real, like going like, oh, who's that? Or like, oh my gosh, you're so stupid, stop posting your stuff, like unfollowed, like all of that is part of the, the piece. So, yeah. man, such a lesson. Things are like constantly in a state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's see, that's another challenge too. It's just like, you know, every time something sort of changes there's like just it's just inherent if you're going to be working in digital mediums like everything's like dependencies on dependencies on dependencies mm -hmm. so how do you ensure access you know and reliability yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it's i was having a discussion with one with a digital artist one day who was saying that the, the worst part about being a digital artist that someday the gallery calls you up and says like hey you know your painting well the green color is missing <laughs> sometimes green disappears and you don't know what's up with the bug and you have to come and you have to fix the fact that there's no more green um, and it's very fragile very very fragile that's actually like i feel like that artist is like then like kind of woke to the issues of of like digital preservation <laughs> the challenge of it because it's like i think a lot of the times like you get a scenario where people are not artists are just sort of like as an artist, your headspace is create, right? Like just this pro make this project. And once this project is done, it's like onto the next, there isn't this sort of thought of like, okay, well then how do I ensure that this thing can still be, will mm -hmm. be <laughs> like X, Y, Z time from now. And that time could be like two weeks when Chrome pushes an update to like, you know, two years when, I don't know, when we're not using iPhones anymore. I don't know. Yeah. But like, I mean, Flash is a really good example of that, right? Flash is a really, really good example of that. Yeah. And, and like, a lot of the times artists kind of don't, I mean, and, and, and should it be, should it be on, like, you know, sort of a burden on the artist's shoulder to think about, like, oh, like, how can I ensure that, like, this piece continues to, to be? A lot of the times it's sort of like, oh, honestly, if that broke, I don't care. It's just, like, it's just an internet thing. It's a website until, mm -hmm. you know, like... Mm -hmm. The head curator of the Google like asks you for it, yeah. Right, or, or or even until something like, oh, whatever, I just made these videos, blah, blah, and then it's just like, okay, it's been it's been exhibited in a few, like, shows, and, and then all of a sudden it's just like someone reports it on Vimeo, and it's just like, oh, okay, there's, like, nudity, and, like, there isn't, there aren't established policies, right, on on the sort of giant platforms of, of that rule, like, mm -hmm. rule all the world. It's like, there, there aren't, like, like Vimeo or like YouTube won't have like an, oh, but that's like artistic and that has like artistic merit. So we should like make that available. Same thing with like apps, like artists creating like, is it artist VR is like a big like problem, right? Like, or like, sort of if you create an app and that app is like no purpose and someone flags that, it's like so easy for, for them. Or the, like, or the, yes, the yes. to remove it, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so I think it's, it's, that's another definitely like a big sort of issue in, um, in born mm -hmm. digital art preservation, where it's just like, well, moving away from platforms, decentralizing is crucial to it. Mm -hmm. um, and figuring out a way to sort of not have access be hinged on these platforms that really don't have sort of the longevity of, of yeah. like digital cultural objects in mind. Mm -hmm. um, the lecture we just talked about um, how MySpace lost 15 years of music. Oh yeah, just like yep, that's yep. Like they just don't. It's not in. It's not in their mission statement to mm -hmm. you know like yeah. I think the sort of cultural aspect to it isn't in their mission statement. So it, you know, it should come as no surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so like organizations like Rhizome are trying to take over or offer possibilities. Well, it's kind of like doing what we can to like patch a constantly sinking ship, <laughs> right? <laughs> that more and more people are using every day. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it. It really, you know, sometimes feel like yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It is like sort of a colossal. 
problem for which you kind of really have to like, there's only like that much effort we can afford as well, right? But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, it's it's also like, I feel like, like a field that, that is only gonna like get increasing like- Of course. Attention. Um, and I also think that with this whole pandemic, there's there's definitely sort of been a spike in interest in like, okay, well, how can we sort of present works digitally? Like what are the sort of, what are the best practices involved? Are there even like best practices? So it's like, that's, that's definitely, yeah, it's good that there's like- a Small silver lining, yeah. Yeah, tiny silver lining. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I could definitely feel like sometimes like sort of digital preservation is just, the analogy like arranging chairs on the titanic <laughs> it's just like oh it's down but okay let's just like let's make sure the comments load um <laughs> yeah no that's that's really like fatalistic of me but no it's 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 but it is the mindset of yeah the the amount of people who realize the the there's so little people who realize how complicated the problem is i think mm -hmm. yeah and also just like, I mean, really, this is such like a high level, I don't know, like a really, really broad sort of like mm -hmm. uh, yeah. intro to it. There's so many like sort of little areas in the field, right? Like if you look at hardware alone, that's like a whole, mm -hmm. a whole like world, you know? And then if you, even if you look at like software preservation, there's like an entire whole universe. Um, there's a lab in Berlin here who uh, focuses exclusively on maintaining um, old hardware. They don't even care about what the software runs. They're all their their job. It's the Media Archaeology Lab, and all they do is just um, make sure they have the the manuals. Make sure the manuals are kind of like matching the version of the hardware they have, and then put this together and then put it in a in a box saying like we know this works at this particular time. If someone wants it in 15 years, for whatever reason, the operating system boots up. That's all they're responsible for. Is this the same as like the media archaeology lab in Boulder? Um, I'm not familiar enough with the one in Boulder. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's, I think, and, and I think that another like sort of important thing to, to keep in mind is just like, okay, like storage isn't preservation, right? Like if I have like a Van Gogh painting and I like chuck it in a chicken coop somewhere, like that's not like, that's not preservation. That's just like putting something somewhere. And, and that's not caring for the object. The thing is like, this is amplified so much when it comes to digital objects where like storage is not preservation in the least. It's like, if you're just gonna like put something somewhere, um, like chances are, if, if, it's, if it's digital, like if it's, if it's actual like, like software, chances are like, you're gonna lose access to it in like a matter of like years, if not, I mean, it just, yeah, it, it could be weeks, it could be years. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the same is true of hardware, right? Like, so, you know, a lot of common pro problem with like um, old computer hardware is like transistors are like capacitors are like the first things to like go, mm -hmm. right? And, and so it, it just, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just like, huh, okay, we can store it in like a hum humidity controlled environment and put a nice label on it and we're set. Like it's yeah. constant work to like conserve it. Um, or then I was reading about the Game Boy cartridges where the cartridges themselves have like a battery inside in order to like just power the circuits so that this, the, the game can be saved. Um, and those batteries are reaching, uh, some of them are like 50 years old, like Super Nintendo is 50 years old, but the Game Boy, the original Game Boy ones are, are reaching their end of life today. Um, are like around our, our years. The game, the retro gaming community, I feel like that, it's the that's, mother, yeah. that's definitely a community where it's just, yeah, like they, they would know like how much labor it takes and patience it takes to keep something mm -hmm. like accessible, to keep something like runnable. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, because I mean, you kind of know like firsthand, right? Like where it's, yeah, I mean, giving me like, three screenshots of you know of a, a game like that justice at all yeah yeah exactly and even and even with screenshots there are, you know people who sort of like mm -hmm. there's definitely arguments on like well like I never saw it like these these pixel perfect screenshots like run on emulators are like that's bullshit like I like these games were not designed in a time where 
these pixel perfect displays existed, they mm -hmm. were viewed on CRT screens. So then there's like the camp of like, well, so the only way to do it is that you got to hook it up to an actual CRT screen and play it. And there's people who are like, you know, writing all these shaders to make it to mm -hmm. emulate like a CRT screen um, on your, on your whatever sort of on your 4K, like, yeah, or like, yeah. Um, so there's, yeah, like, it's just, there's so many like issues. There's, there's, there's like, yeah, very little, like, I think established, like, uh, this is the way to do it. A lot of questions, a lot of challenges, and like a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I think the thing for me that's just like particularly interesting for, for this field is like kind of seeing, like, I mean, I kind of fell into this with, um, so I, I did my master's at NYU's um, interactive telecommunications program. Mm -hmm. And so that's a program where it's kind of like art meets tech. And so I got to a point where I was like, wait a minute, like none of this, everything that I'm making, like something that I made like two weeks ago isn't working because like, you know, some, something's been updated somewhere, right? So it's just, okay, like what, what about the sort of longevity of these works? And um, I took a class with the, um, who the artistic director of Rhizome was teaching. Um, it's called, had a strange name data dumps and storage wars. But anyway, so, you know, sort of talking about these issues in um, digital preservation was something that sort of got me thinking about it like more. And so that's how I wound up at Rhizome after um, graduation. Um, but like working on this and thinking that, oh yeah, like this, this, sort of these practices, um, really just thinking about them in, in relation to the preservation of like, of, mm -hmm of art pieces that like that inherently depend on like the the you know where the medium is like technological like, yeah, exactly. inherently um you know like i feel like getting to know these like challenges and preservation better you kind of realize like no wait a minute the scope is actually like far wider right like there's just so many like mm -hmm. like you know it, it's the the sort of context for i guess like social like um yeah. social memory yeah like it, you know like it's it's there's so much that's lost i mean i feel like i could mm -hmm. yeah like, I, yeah i mean I was, I was i had a student once who wanted to do a pro, um, a project on um dealing with a breakup essentially he wanted to sonify his um the messages that he had sent with his, to his ex um but all of those were on like messenger whatsapp um instagram all these like well, different platforms, but they all belong to Facebook. Um, all those like separate siloed-ish platforms. How do you how do you have an accurate like record of your history when you don't have paper anymore? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like you could also like extend to that particular like cultural heritage of saying like, oh, like what did when sixty years when you talk to your parents and your parents say like, oh, like this is like the first time that your dad sent me a letter when blah blah. blah we're on the other side of the world. Um, there's not going to be like this anymore. It's going to be like, oh, I remember I had an Outlook email address that was fun and then what what did what happened to outlook well, outlook disappeared yeah like just sort of like imagine if there, like there's if there's just like no way to capture it like mm -hmm. trying to explain like 40 years from now like something stupid that you watched on tiktok and like trying to explain what that is without like without any sort of way of of like mm -hmm. Yeah, or just the like the fascinating scrolling it. Just scrolling <laughs> and then video scrolling video scrolling video and just being there like the influx of content, like maybe in 50 years, there'll be a ban on content and then people will be like, wait, what? You had unlimited access to it? That's dark. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, like it's, it's kind of strange that for something so central to, I think the sort of story mm -hmm. of our time, right? Like the, the internet, like connected, feels weird to say like connected devices like the internet like and the entire sort of ecosystem of that is so central to sort of just existing day-to-day -day, right like our mobile devices all the apps of the mobile devices is like it's so central to like literally existing like how we get information like how we how we like live that it's strange that there's like so little like attention yeah, attention paid to kind of capturing 
Mm -hmm. Or it's like when you, you know, you can download your like private data on Facebook or you have this like privacy settings and you can decide and you get a zip essentially. I think Google does the same. Um, and I did it once and I realized that like whatever Facebook officially has does not represent my experience of Facebook over time. Um, mm -hmm. Or it doesn't represent the like sort of different networks uh, that I've made across different like cities, organizations, groups, um, and the, the relationship that I have to that is not like a list of 250 JPEGs. Yeah, that's, that's, I guess, another thing, too, is just talking about, like, the sort of parallels of, like, how I was sort of looking at this as, like, things that are very technical and specific only to, like, like tech, mm -hmm. tech art. But then it's, like, no, if you're looking at, say, like, um, practices of, of, so when you're, like, an archivist doesn't just go, like, yes, let me just save all the data. I'm a data hoarder. Give me all of it. Like, no, you kind of have to make decisions on, like, what gets, like, cared for like what sort of mm -hmm. makes it into the archive right yeah, what, what aspect um, of it or like what angle do you want to have on it and that makes me sort of yeah like where where data isn't the you know like isn't data isn't the memory isn't the right like phrase where data like what do you you know d like data like data alone doesn't paint the picture mm -hmm. um and you know it's it's i think thought and care needs to be paid to like you know like what you were saying which is like oh yeah like so okay i've downloaded like my 20 gigs of data like from google or from like facebook but this isn't like this isn't at all like sort of preserving a narrative of me like a picture of, of me uh, or of my experience during this time yeah um, yeah mm -hmm. yeah Cool. Um, should we wrap it up? Is there like another part of Rhizome that? Let's see. So I wanted to show here just, you know, if anyone's sort of interested in, in the other stuff that, the other stuff, <laughs> this is like in, in Rhizome. Um, so we also, you know, we commission um, articles, we've got events. Anyway, so everything, the website's the best place to go to. So rhizome.org is the place you want to go if you want to find out more about what Rhizome's up to. And Whoa, we've already like chatted quite a bit, but um, I sort of wrote down these like four questions. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it'd be good to sort of like pose these questions yeah. to your students. Um, yeah, we'll discuss those in, in recitation. Yeah, and they certainly don't have simple answers. So <laughs> it's really mm -hmm. more like prompts for discussion. Cool, sweet. Um, can I share your contact info if some of them might be interested in yeah, talking? Yeah, for, sure. for sure, for sure. Cool. Um, and I'll, I have the link to the presentation, so I'll send it to them as well. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so, I mean, thank you, Pat. Um, thank you for this like long distance um, <laughs> contribution to the class. And Thanks for having me. Yeah. And have a good afternoon in New York. And you have a good evening in Berlin. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.